The Michigan Wedding Podcast is brought to you by RDS Films and Michaels Entertainment. Well, uh, welcome to the Michigan Wedding Podcast, designed for engaged couples curious to learn more about the people that make up the Michigan wedding industry on a deeper and more personal level. I'm Seth, your host, and today we're here at the Meeting House Grand Ballroom in downtown Plymouth, here with my good friend Todd, who, along with his wife Tracy, have owned and managed the Meeting House Grand Ballroom for quite a f- many years now. Yep. How, how you doing, Todd? Doing good. Thank you, Seth. Uh, welcome again. And uh, it's great to be here. We, we love our facility here, and uh, yeah, we're coming up under six years. Six uh, years now. Trace and I, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's been a fantastic uh, operation here. We love our brides and grooms. This is a great place here in downtown Plymouth, and uh, a favorite business for us. <laughs> Absolutely. I used to live in downtown Plymouth. Um, actually back in the day over Plymouth Park Apartments. Yep, there you go. Not too far. Yeah. There you go. I was 18, it was my first uh, apartment outside of home and I, I used to ride my bike uh, through downtown Plymouth on my days off. There you go. And I'd pass right by the meeting house and I had no idea how incredible this place was yep. at the time, but this place is something else. Seriously. Yeah, we're a nice little hidden jewel here in the downtown uh, area <laughs> here. Uh, again, a, a great facility. Um, you know, Perfect location, downtown Kellett Park, all great restaurants. Oh, uh, yeah. Walking distance. Can't beat it. Some, uh, you know, some awesome bar hopping to do. So oh, to yeah. Speak, after our uh, great prize and grooms leave and uh, you know, finish the night, so to speak. I no guess, doubt. So, uh, we were, we, we, this has been a long time coming, this conversation we're having. We were originally going to have it back in March. Yep. And the whole world turned upside down. But, um, but when, we, when we hung out, I think briefly before that, we stopped when we were in the neighborhood. You had a little, a new pup, a new member of the family, a little puppy? Oh here? yeah, yeah, we got one of those <laughs> old new puppies. Uh, it was a good time for us and uh, I, it, it was nice to have the time off to uh, get that puppy trained. You there know, you go. She just you know, turned one year old, so. Oh, that's uh, sweet. We're, we're, a, we're a dog family. Uh, love our dogs. Yeah, well, I got, we got a little, little Maggie. She's 17 now, oh, so it's been a long time since she was a puppy, but she's still, uh, She's still, you know, she's got those moments where she's, oh, yeah. she's young again, you know, jumping around like, like she, like the arthritis isn't actually there. <laughs> she forgets, got it. you know. <laughs> yeah. But well, we all love our four-legged friends. But what's it like, man, to own the coolest wedding venue, venue in downtown Plymouth? That must be pretty sweet. It, it, it's exciting. Um, this uh, business has been in, in my blood, uh, the hospitality industry. Um, I always say my, my story goes, you know, I used to wash dishes in the back, so I think I've worked myself from the from the bottom to the top, so to speak, and uh, uh, it, it is a fun business. Uh, you work with brides and grooms, you work with happy people, which is nice. Yeah. Um, you're creating a lifetime event for two great people, both their families, and some awesome friends and relatives of those families, and you're creating memories. And that's what the, the wedding industry is all about. And we have great support uh, from you guys, from the DJs, from the photographers, to the cake vendors, to the, uh, to the florists, and uh, you know even even our other uh, you know local competitors here in the, in the market. Sure. Uh, we're all wedding focused. Um, it's a tough industry to be in, but it's a very gratifying. Yeah, industry. absolutely Re- rewarding when when you're when you you got good people and, and you got good it. staff like you guys got to make you it all. Got it. Knock it out of the park. It does take a team. You got it. Yep. Yep. Our staff's very important to us. So what's the, I mean, you mentioned that you had, you were washing the dishes in the back. What's the the story for how you and Tracy came to own it? That must be. Well, it does go all the way back to the original Mayflower Hotel, which uh, used to be across the street. And uh, that was part of the family business. Um, I was one of the, uh, again, I've been in hospitality, so I've got uh, a chef background. And I was a chef for 30 years, so I worked the back. I didn't know house. that. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you went so from washing the dishes to cooking the food and now it. running the biz. You got it. Wow. Yeah, started off as a country club. Uh, been high school washing dishes and worked myself through uh, Schoolcraft College. I went there too. Yeah. That's where I was when I was living up the road. I was going you to Schoolcraft. Yeah. Great, great, uh, great college up there. In, oh yeah. In, uh, in Livonia, uh, did the culinary arts program. Uh, did a couple years out at uh, Iowa State for hospitality management and then, uh, then the culinary uh, degree 
and that just really just kind of kept me glued to this industry. Sure. And um, I Trace and I met uh, at the old hotel across the street. Oh no way! Yeah, in the original dining room. Uh, she was a service uh, server, and I was one of the cooks there. And from there, it oh. just uh, <laughs> just kind of took off. That's awesome. And um, when we left uh, the, the old Mayflower, we both uh, uh, Trace went into um, uh, mortgages, and I went over to Ann Arbor. I was a hotel shop for 20 years, and uh, Tracy worked in the mortgage industry. And uh, 20 years later, we made a roundabout and came back. Uh, my aunt and uncle, uh, Randy and Mary, uh, were running the facility. They were at their 20, 20 something years uh, of running it. So, your aunt and your uncle were running. Absolutely. Was yeah. it the meeting house then, or was it still the Mayflower? Or? It was still the meeting house. Meeting house at that point, yeah. okay. Yeah. So uh, they took over for my grandparents, they had the ownership, and then they took over and ran the facility specifically over here uh, about 20, 25 years. Um, we, we heard that they were, had the interest of you know, possibly retiring, so kind of dove our, dove our noses into the idea of it and uh, had a little sit down one afternoon and <laughs> yeah. here we are. <laughs> so um, it's nice because it's a, it's a family run business and we're the ter third generation to own and operate the Third facility. generation? So you got it. So, so your aunt and your uncle were the previous? And, and my grandparents. Your yeah. grandparents were the first yeah. one. 1963, from, I, was, I was reading on the yeah. website. 1965. 65, yeah. that's right, yep. So, in back in 1965, that first year, that was uh, my, my parents got married. They were the first wedding here, number one. Your parents were the first ones that got yes. married here? Yes. Wow. Yeah, so, and they just had their anniversary, August 7th this year. Oh, and, congratulations uh, to the family. That's you got it. really exciting. And uh, 55 years. So 55 we years. are in, in, uh, in rare company, so to speak. And uh, they say this industry is, is tough, and uh, to have a third generation in an industry uh, such as this is even uh, a little more extreme. Yeah. And, now, uh, there's not a lot of people can say that. Yeah. That's correct. That's so correct. one of the things that's always... Um, really blown me away with you and Tracy is, you know, you always hear people talk about how it can be challenging to run a business with a loved one, especially a husband, wife, best friend, Absolutely. you know, but you guys have proved that it's possible. I mean, you, you, you successfully run the business and you still have a healthy relationship for, yeah. for listeners out there that might be a couple that might be talking about starting a business one day together. What advice do you have for them to maybe help them have the success that you guys have had? Well, absolutely, it is a give and take. Um, you know, you may not agree on all decisions. Uh, you do need to come to a conclusion eventually that 51% uh, is more accurate than 49%. <laughs> um, and sometimes if you can't come to the same decision, you know what, maybe you just kind of, you know, put that uh, discussion uh, to the table that for, for a day or so, revisit that. You got to give yourself some time to think about some of the decisions, and maybe it's not the decision that what's best for me, but what's best for the the business, what's best for the meeting house at the end of the day, and you know you got to kind of pull the personal aspects out of it and do kind of dive down into the business aspect of your big decisions, whether it be a financial decision, whether it be a purchase decision, or whether it be you know even a maintenance issue decision something small yeah something yeah. small you know do you buy that new dishwasher this year do you wait till next year uh do you change your menus this year you know what's what's gonna be the best for the overall the company put your heads together cool heads will prevail yes you'll have some challenges okay <laughs> uh but that's just like any business operation um it can be a little more under the microscope when you're with your spouse but uh, at the end of the day, you know, you work for the company and uh, you s still go home and things are still going to be okay. Yeah, so it sounds like a big key from what I'm hearing is trying to separate the emotion yes. as best you can from Absolutely. the, the str strategy of actually running the business. Somewhat, yep. yep there is that. And, um, and again, there's always the correct answer and you just got to get to that answer may take a little while. Patience. But patience. <laughs> yeah. um, but for the most part, uh, we would agree together. And the more you're into this business, the more you will learn, you know, what your partner has, you know, in their head. 
in the direction that they want in terms of making those big financial decisions or other uh, decisions of, in that direction. So don't be rushed with those, you know, Absolutely if you need not. to table it, like you said, you yeah. know what, we can't come to an agreement right now. Instead of making a quick decision and let's, let's oh, you know what, let's take our time. You got it. Let's talk yeah. about it tomorrow or next week. And probably some of it. And that's <laughs> some of the advice that we got from our aunt, aunt and uncle, you know, when they kind of trained us and uh, kind of gave us the reins. And uh, they went through a lot of that themselves. And sure. uh, the same thing, you know, if you can't come to a decision, don't make the decision right then. That's really, honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to put that in my notes for later. You, you got know? it. Cause you that, got that might it. be good advice. Even if you're not running a business, just running a family. Pretty much. It's, there, is it, do you see a lot of parallels between running a family and running a business and running a kitchen? Like it, it, there is, yep, there is, um, different levels, uh, different, uh, on financial levels, so to speak, but for the most part, it is the same. Yeah, you're right. The principles, at least, you the foundation, kind of. Absolutely. That, that's a. I appreciate you for sharing that because I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of. I know yeah. I did out of what you just said. Absolutely. You know. Um, so, let's talk about the food a little bit because you know, we've probably done, I don't know, thirty or forty weddings here with you guys over the past ten years, and every meal we've had has been off the charts. I mean, served hot, steamy packed with flavor and it's and it seems like it's not always the same thing it's 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 diverse the menu guy you know from from event to event I guess like walk me through how you maintain such a consistent quality in your kitchen and and maybe talk a little bit about how you um, help guests or help your clients pick the menu for their particular event Okay. Yeah, the food does uh, start, you know, at the heart of the kitchen. Um, starts with the person who's uh, running and operating that. Again, I do have background in the culinary arts uh, uh, field, so I kind of, you know, got that food in me, and uh, that, that'll never go away. Um, my twin brother is actually our executive chef, and he's been on board for. A That's right. Years. Sometimes I've seen him yes. at the end. I'm like, yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Todd. And he's like, I'm not Todd. Yeah. <laughs> but my, one of my best kept secrets around here. So um, he's currently our, our executive chef. And we are known for you are Todd though, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, we are we are known uh, for awesome food um, in our great service. And uh, food is utmost importance. Um, as long as the bride and groom are here on time and ready to go, we're, we're on time. You know, we say dinner service at seven fifteen. You know, our kitchen doors are opening up at seven fifteen. We're going to start. Um, timing is important. Uh, the quality of the food and the ingredients that you purchase, so you can purchase. Uh, Locally, you got some great local uh, people here. You got Gordon Food Service. You got some great produce people out of Detroit. Uh, great products, uh, as long as you purchase, uh, you know, good quality at the front end. Put in the hands of a talented chef. Get this uh, food served in a timely manner and piping hot and fresh. That's the key to success. Oh yeah. Great food, and uh, the big thing is timing. So the chef has to finish up with those plated meals moments before we're ready to open up those doors and all wheels are spinning service staff are top notch they've got to be ready to go and you just move like a swiss watch <laughs> okay just you know timely consistent and without glitches right so i remember i did my friend lawrence it's always cool when you get to be a part of someone's wedding you know oh, yeah. you know it's always fun when you know somebody you get those warm and fuzzies i'm sure you, you got it oh yeah experienced that too yeah I, I did you my friend Lauren Malley was her name before she that was her maiden name but she she uh, a few years back and I remember you guys put together a Polish meal that was just mm -hmm. unforgettable um, I, I know her family had some Polish uh, do, do some are you able to sometimes like how do you customize like where, where do your menu options come from um, like is it seasonal is it you know for every event, it's, it's, it's kind of different. Do you have a few options you let them pick from? We do. Um, you can choose a plated meal, buffet meal, famous style meal with us here. Um, most of the entrees are quite similar amongst the three styles of servicing. Uh, there's a few items that are better served uh, family style versus plated, uh, such as probably that Polish meal that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or putting it on a buffet. Um, it's coming out of the same kitchen, uh, the same talented chefs are putting their food together. We've got tried and true recipes. Um, all of our appetizers are, uh, are homemade here, uh, very specific to our own recipes that we've created, and uh, just some great items. And again, you gotta have the talent of a, of a great chef to put the food together, be able to taste it, 
and uh, we, we kind of transitioned uh, with my brother in, into clean food. So you know, elimination of uh, gluten products, uh, soy products to the best as possible, using uh, all natural olive oils instead of uh, traditional butters and creams. Oh, nice. Stuff like that. Olive oil. And the flavor of olive oil, too, is... Oh, absolutely. Is the... Yeah, it just freshens. Yeah. And uh, as long as you can kind of get in towards that uh, mindset when it comes to your food, uh, you can really create a very healthy and appetizing meal. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and our portions are awesome. We, we've got great sized portions. Absolutely. Full meal service. You're always full. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And you don't, you don't forget, we've got late night snacks as well. Too. Oh, yeah. So pizzas, <laughs> we've got some taco bars and items like that. Right. So, they're, when they're, they're, they're grooving, they're burning those calories, they're running out, it. and then, oop, recharge. Let's you do it. We got it. We <laughs> got it. So, um, I guess couples that are listening that are maybe thinking, hey, I want to learn more. What's the process for getting in touch with you um, okay. to start the booking process? Oh, absolutely. Um, first off, we'd always say visit our website. Okay, we've got everything online. We have all of our menus online, a ton of pictures. Uh, and then uh, reach out to us and, and uh, book a showing uh, with us. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, we're open uh, you know, most uh, normal days. Uh, traditionally, close on Sundays. Just bear that in mind. Most people have a wedding event. Sure. Um, and then we'll get you in. We'll show you around. Either my wife, uh, Tracy, or I will uh, be willing to walk you through. Kind of show the facility. We'll walk through all of our special uh, event space that we have here. We sit down with our brides and grooms individually. We walk them through all of our contract papers and all of our menus, answer any questions in regards to food, uh, price points, and then we'll look at some open dates. Uh, 2021 is going to be a busy year. Tough so year, we'll especially. We probably don't have any, almost no Saturdays left for those peak um, dates, right? November's and December's we have open. A little but, bit. Uh, we've cool. got pretty much Saturdays booked uh, September, October, and even in August as well. Yeah. So, but so there are some few great dates still available. Fridays, in the Sundays. Yep, Fridays and Sundays. And then if you're really looking to that 2022, Two, which yeah. is a, a, a only option for a lot of folks. Pretty much. Uh, that's where we're going to start to uh, see the wheel spinning pretty soon here. Uh, it's 2022, and those will probably be uh, our Christmas uh, engagement brides and uh, into next year, uh, Valentine's Day around there. So that's usually a big push come winter time, uh, Christmas holiday, into the new year, into Valentine's Day, uh, a lot of engagements. Oh, yeah. So that's usually our busy time. Of January, the February. You got it. So Phones are ringing quite, off the hook, you're right? <laughs> yeah. Phones ringing, maybe not as many wedding events, but it's the, it's the time of the year to start planning. Right. And, and uh, start booking those events. And speaking of planning, let's say when a couple does book with you, uh, what's your, what, do you, what do you do to kind of hold their hand through the planning process leading up to the event? Okay. Well, we are, are on site and we uh, you know, give comfort in our brides and grooms that we're owners as well as operators. So we're on site, we're here, we open our doors, we close our doors. Yeah, every event I've ever done with you guys, you've personally been here. here. You and Tracy. Yep, we're here. We're that's, absolutely here. That, that, it, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty admirable. You that's know? a huge selling point for us. Um, not all venues would have owners operators on, on site. Um, sometimes they work with bank or captains, uh, which is, it works fine for some places. Uh, we're a family business, so we're going to take care of you and we're going to coordinate with our brides and grooms from the beginning all the way until lights up the end of the night and wish them the best of luck. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I'm, I know usually we're the last ones out the door, and I know, you know, you're definitely here to the last person's out the door. That, that's it. us carrying our cart out. You got it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but it, and it's a labor of love, and it's just how we operate it, and it's how we do it, and it's how we feel. Uh, a very upscale, uh, a prominent venue such as us uh, needs to be operated. Yeah. And it will put the mindset in the guests, and they will turn into future events and future bride and grooms and future referrals. And selfishly, you obviously just love what you do. So. We do. <laughs> we do. It, 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 it is a labor of love. Yeah. Um, I always say this the hospitality industry is, is a tough industry to be in. Um, Got to kind of get be married to it, so to speak. Uh, there's really no half in and half out of it. Uh, you've got to give it your all. Yeah. Um, it, it takes up time. That you'll you'll miss some family events, yes. Uh, but for the most part, you you really got to be in, into this business. Yeah, absolutely. So I know a, with you know a lot of the uncertainty there have been some events that people have booked that it turned out, oh, they can't have it inside. 
Do you have a capacity on site to do uh, an outside event in, in worst case scenario? Yeah, and uh, we did do a few events outside in uh, tent rental, and uh, we maxed out about 100 people for those events, and uh, they were successful. Um, Sweet. We still use the inside for the restrooms and, and bar servicing. And but, your kitchen uh, and all that. And the so kitchen, yeah. Perfect. Um, but the guests were downstairs, outside, parking lot, under a tent. So they you can make it happen. It. That's, we can make it happen. That's really good happen. news for a lot of people. Yeah, we can make it happen. And for the foreseeable future, we're probably going to have smaller events uh, moving forward in the next year. And uh, we can accommodate those. You know, if we need to do a wedding for just a you know, nice small event, 50 people, um, it's something that may not have been in our wheelhouse in the past, but, uh, you know, uncertain times or you start doing uncertain things sometimes right. and you know we're starting to you got to be creative in these times yeah adapt and, to the new situation yeah so smaller events uh, bridal showers wedding showers um your funerals those are all in the small 50 60 70 you know, person range and uh, those are available here at the meeting house sure as well as all of our future wedding events uh we'll max out at 300 but we can go anything under that as well so um, we just got to stay in line with, with uh, what, what our uh, state guidelines tell us. Absolutely. So, so I know in, in a little bit, um, you, you were gracious enough to give us a little tour through the space. But before we uh, do that, is it, anything else on your mind you want to talk about as far as uh, kind of what just, makes you guys unique? And, and we'll just, well, we, we love our business here. Again, uh, just being family run uh, orientated, uh, all hands on deck kind of a, of a company that we are. Uh, owner operator it's uh, it's really how we were, we push that a lot because it's unique it's unique to us um, our food really sells us a lot and we get some great reviews on servicing as well oh yeah and you know being a great beautiful city of downtown Plymouth uh, it's, it almost sells itself in that manner as well absolutely and uh, we, we just really enjoy being here and you know this place isn't gonna go anywhere <laughs> we're not gonna go anywhere anytime soon uh, many years before I need to retire. So, Absolutely. Uh, we're going to keep uh, hosting happy brides and grooms and baby showers and, and whatnot uh, for the foreseeable future. A lot of beautiful memories left to make in these, in these hallowed halls it. here. You got it. So. <laughs> I think we got uh, half a dozen events in the books with you guys next year. So we're looking Perfect. forward to yeah. lots of good times. And uh, yeah, thanks again for taking the time to talk with me today, Todd. It's been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You bet. Michigan Wedding Podcast is brought to you by RDS Films and Michaels Entertainment.